the discourse surrounding the 49ers defense has been amusing the past couple of weeks. So against the Falcons, they didn't have their starting defensive line and a few other starters. Against the Chiefs, it was the Chiefs. It was Patrick Mahomes. So, of course, when they were banged up, it was going to go the way that it did. The game did not start out the way many wanted against the Rams. And naturally, people were calling for D'Amico Ryan's head. What I saw was a defense that had four, five bad plays in a stretch of 25. That is still not a high enough success rate for a lot of people. But I want to get into one specific play. And this play is why I think D'Amico is going to be a head coach sooner than later, probably after this season, and why this team is so well coached. They have a bunch of good players, but uh, this is probably my favorite play of the year by the defense. So let's talk about it. What we have here, the Rams are going to run duo, and that is their favorite play. When you know what the opponent's tendencies are, you can manipulate them, you can get one-on-ones and you can get your best players in ideal situations. That's exactly what happens here. So the Rams won du- run duo more than any team in the NFL, 18% of the time. They run the ball the fewest of any team in the NFL. And if you watch the game on Sunday, it shows. So 27 of their 146 carries are duo. And what duo is, is you're just going to get a double team on the defensive tackles and you're trying to push them back into the linebackers. That way your running back is free to run. So we'll talk through some of the other responsibilities and let's start out with this guy. So for duo to work, and I know I just talked about getting doubles on the defensive tackles. Sorry, it should go here, 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 and then these two here. By doing that, your offensive tackles, this guy and this guy, are responsible for blocking the defensive ends one-on-one. D'Amico Ryans did a really good job of manipulating, and I, I use that word because when you know what the offense is going to do, you can use their rules against them. So I want you to watch the play first and see the duo. So you see the double working to this defensive tackle, the double team working to this defensive tackle, and then you have tackle one-on-one, tackle one-on-one. So we have a Four-man surface, so you don't count the center. One, two, three, four. So we have four players to block. One, two, three, four, including a linebacker to that side. So 49ers have the numbers advantage. I mentioned that this guy is going to be one-on-one with this guy. This player, pretty good. Pretty good against the run. Samson Ebukam. So watch the Rams go one-on-one here. This is as good as it gets from a technique standpoint. You always hear people say, low man wins. What it really is, is if his helmet gets right underneath his chin, that is a win. That is the ideal leverage that you're looking for. So look at Ebukam's hand placement. Look at where his helmet is. This is how you know the 49ers are well coached. So they have some unreal athletes who are crazy quick, crazy fast, crazy powerful, But when you do everything that you're coached to do and you do it precisely, it ends up like this. So he's able to take that tackle. And again, we're just watching Ebukam one-on-one with this guy. The A gap is on the hash. So A gap, B gap, C gap. Ebukam starts in the C gap, steps down, gets his hands inside, is right underneath the chin. So he wins with leverage, has the technique because of that. He's able to take the offensive tackle from the C gap to the A gap. For this play to work, any offensive coordinator will tell you this, you have to control the defensive ends. The Rams do not. So from the jump, the 49ers already won because he won his one-on-one battle. Okay, so that's the front side. Now we're going to look to the weak side. So I mentioned the 49ers have the numbers advantage. He collapsed. He gets tackled here, which we'll watch at the end. But when you have the numbers advantage, you're probably going to force the running back to change his path, change his angle departure. If we go back to the weak side here, so again, we have the center blocking weak on the one technique, who's Kevin Givens, the left guard blocking down, or sorry, doubling down. He's going to step inside. Why? To protect any sort of free run through from the weak side. 
All right. Again, the 49ers know the Rams are going to run duo here. So they know the blocking rules. Because that, he, D'Amico Ryan's slants. So he's going to have Kevin Givens try to cross the face of the center. He's going to have Nick Bosa. Knowing that I'm one-on-one with Nick Bosa, so good luck there. He's going to slant and try to cross the face of the left tackle. So by doing that, slanting this way, you take him out of the equation. Also, you get his pads turn. Let's watch how that plays out. Givens does his job. And again, it helps when you have crazy athletes who are quick enough to get off the ball like this. So Givens does his job, turns the pads. And I mentioned this guy is stepping down to protect this run through. And I mean, when when I when I talk, when I think of value, I think of Fred Warner. So this guy, what he means to this defense, I I, I can't even put it into words. So I want to focus on him real quick. Warner is he's essentially reading three different things on this play. So as soon as the left guard steps down, he knows like he he has a better chance of scoring a touchdown from this from this um, viewpoint to where War- to get to Warner instead of getting to Warner. So th- that's just not going to happen. So Warner is reading him. He's also reading his angle departure. So where his track is, if he's going this way, if he's going to come back this way. Also, he has to, Fred Warner has to make sure that Bosa is going to cross his face. So in a span of well, a split second, Warner's line of vision is three different reads and he sees it all. So he gets a free run through, gets a tackle for loss. That is a lot on this play but there's a lot going on. So overload to one side, which essentially you're forcing the Rams to beat your unblocked blocker, unblocked defender, or you want to come back to this side where it's pretty much even too, but is it really even when you have your two best players and also another very good run defender one-on-one? So, I mean, this is about as well as you can possibly play this. And this really sums up how the rest of the game went. I know they gave up a couple of big plays. One of the plays was an out and up to Allen Robinson. And if you've watched the NFL this year, you've probably heard that Robinson has been on a melt card. So that those are the type of plays that are not sustainable. And that played itself out. So just incredible amount of kudos to D'Amico Ryans. The defense and how they played, how they executed. I mean, their physicality is insane too. So it helps again to have a ton of good players who can win their one-on-one battles. We didn't even get to Hufunga, who this probably should have been a holding call. Watch off to the left side here. Everybody's favorite literally tackles him. (laughs) Tackles him to the ground. No call. Doesn't matter because they're able to get the stop on this play. Probably would have prevented um, a touchdown. But either way, I, I love this play. I love the design. I love manipulating, again, the rules of the Rams. And you get one-on-ones, one-on-ones, one-on-ones. That's what it's about. You get your best players in a one-on-one situation. And when that happens, they're going to win. This guy is a computer. Like, the the way that he is able to process what is in front of him, the information that's given to him, and react to it, it should not be... Um, he, he just deserves a lot more credit than what he gets, I feel like. And then that's why I honestly, I think he is their most valuable player. And I know that's probably going to make you scratch your head knowing that Nick Bosa has eight sacks and just has been as dominant, but he's the ultimate glue guy. So, I mean, th- this play might be the, this play might only interest me, but I think it really speaks to the execution of this defense and just how well they are coached. So enjoy D'Amico while he's still here because these are the type of schemes. These are the type of concepts that, I don't know, they just don't exist around the rest of the NFL.